All right, we're finally getting on to New Kingdoms. Oh, this is my this is my favorite. Fucking love Wood Zone. <laughs> <laughs> and now you ruined it. I hate Steam <laughs> <laughs> I do like the look and feel of this level. I do, however, have one problem with it in that it is probably the level in the game that feels the most like a galaxy level. And as a fan of the Galaxy games, that might sound like a weird complaint, but I mean that in the sense that it, it's... Uh, it feels like a lot of it is sectioned off and... Um, Level specific herded, in a sense. Yeah, heard it in. Like, yeah, you there go are, down a specific path. And there is, yeah, there's there. definitely, like, the, the Iron Road part and the Forest part, and they're pretty separate. I can understand well, that. Well, dope. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, to go back to the whole tangent we had last part, I think maybe that would have been a good way to <laughs> entice someone to jump down into the hole, like, have, like, a couple purple coins floating above the hole to indicate, hey, something's down here, stupid. Uh, this, I, I didn't realize that you could go down here by jumping off the side. Yeah. You always land in the same spot, though, is the thing. Uh, you yeah, always land... Weird. Yeah, so uh, the laws of physics do not apply in this place. You always land right next to an exit, too, which... Which I, uh, I suppose is a good thing if you in case you land on here accidentally. Also, if you want to cheese your way through this area, all you have to do is just put the game to snapshot mode and change the filter, and then you'll be able to see the entire background. <laughs> so yeah, it's very weird like that. Why does this T-Rex have a hat? <laughs> uh, why does Mario have a hat, John? All right. Because, you see, I, I, Mario has a hat Mario because Miyamoto doesn't like drawing hair. Yeah. <laughs> the T-Rex, though. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, I mean, it could have been a top hat either. Come on. Uh, you think throwing your hat can move me, the dinosaur? <laughs> Please. It worked before. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> all right, dinosaur, I'm I'm all I'm all revved up. Come back at me, bro. Here we go. Run away! This thing really is terrifying, though. When you're uh, when you realize that it's actually down here and trying to chase after you. Yeah, because the only the only sort of indication that there's something here that the screen vibrates. Yeah, and then like when you realize that it's the TX in T TX, what the T Rex? The well, T you know, <laughs> you can hear the <laughs> in the background, yeah. and that always makes you think Jurassic Park. You know, don't yeah, don't all even it's missing deny. Was like the glass of water, so the rippling. You know, before seeing it, that this guy is stomping around down here. It's like, oh god, there's a T Rex that's actually awake. <laughs> yeah, but I thought it was just going to be friendly, and like, nope, it's actually a, a it, bloodthirsty dinosaur that wants to You have to, to stand eat. still, its sight is based on movement. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, dinosaurs were actually birds now, because I hate science. <laughs> like, okay, I, I, I do believe science that... Isn't, science, isn't about, science isn't about being cool, it's about being right. I know, but... Feather dinosaurs is lame. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I mean that's a well, that's a that's a plan, that, I mean that's a plot point in Jurassic World. So, well, yeah, well, just like, pluck the feathers off the dinosaur. There you go. It's back to normal. Yeah, <laughs> they, they like genetically modified the dinosaurs to not have feathers because it looks cool. They looked better that way. Yeah. So now we know that dinosaurs are probably more related to birds than we imagine. We need to have like rubber T Rexes. Just to join this rubber chicken brethren. The um, uh, the, the the weirdest thing about the movie Jurassic Park though has to do with the T Rex's eyesight. I think in the book, Grant doesn't actually realize that the T Rex's eyesight is based on movement until he discovers it by accident, and then he uses it. But he just magically knows in the movie. How would you have figured that out from fossils? <laughs> Not to you mention look at, you that look is, at their eye socket. You look at their eye sockets and such. Yeah, but if he believes that they were based off of birds, birds have excellent eyesight, so that doesn't really. It's it's fit. all it's it's just such a weird thing to assume about the king of predators because it's the most counter. Intuitive genetic trait. A well, it's not even. It, well, it's not even the king of predators. There's evidence to suggest that the T. Rexes were more scavengers than outright hunters. But but they but they're big. They're they're big, which means that. They're... Oh, when when I when I say the when I say the king, I'm I'm, I'm just talking. I'm I'm just making a play on the name. Uh, 
Tyrannosaurus Rex, Lizard King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the big one, which means it's the best, right? No, no there were ones that were bigger. One, but... I mean, isn't the Brontosaur? There are lots of dinosaurs that are bigger than the T Rex. Yeah, but the, well, the Brontosaur the is, a, <laughs> is a is a herbivore, though. So <laughs> technically, the reason that Jurassic Park three pulled in the Spinosaurus was because it's one of the one, one of the one of the big big ass predator dinosaurs that's actually bigger than the T Rex. So they thought they could make it cooler based on that alone. No, you just can't. You can't argue with iconography. Uh, you just can't. <laughs> People will see things the way they see them. This T Rex is the clumsiest motherfucker. It's almost it's like almost its like, brain it's like a, is the size of a, of a pea. <laughs> and it has tiny little arms. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the uh, image of the T Rex with like holding two of the extendo grabby arm things. He's like, I'm unstoppable. You know, this oh, T-Rex really is behaving as if its visual acuity is based on movement. Did you see it trying <laughs> to run into that tree there and just like, what's in my way? <laughs> yeah, because if, if you think about it, that it would be running into walls and stuff all the time, wouldn't it? If it was, if it was only able to see what's moving. That said... If something's visual acuity is based on movement. Oh yeah, we got a pet rock. <laughs> I'm, I'm a stone, Luigi. You didn't make me. If something's visual acuity is based on movement, wouldn't turning, wouldn't it, the the dinosaur turning its head make everything move? Or am I misunderstanding that concept? No, that's always what I've thought. You know, it's just like, oh wait, something's moving, so I can see. Oh, whatever. It's almost I'm a go, like I'm a, I'm a go chase. Dies from a seizure. <laughs> oh. Wow, Ryan, your aim sucks. <laughs> Back up. There you go. But there's obviously something on this log here because it's shutting out over the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> so if we jump into this abyss, do we go to the deeper woods? No, it just no. kills you. Aww. <laughs> Where we find... Uh, oh, God. what I forget even what the name of the super dinosaurs in Jurassic World is. That movie sucks, for the record. Like I don't think it sucks. I, uh, just think, it has a, I think it has a, a bit too different of a feel from the series it's based on to really fit in. Uh, Which, you know, might be part of the intention, but at the same time gives it a somewhat different appeal. I just like, hate every character in that movie. <laughs> that, that's something that I have a problem with. I won't necessarily say they're bad characters, but they're very uh, uh, gro grocery store romance novel idealized kind of characters. Except for the kids. I kind of like the kids. In I, the, kids the kids are okay. Like, I do... It's it's weird because they're the characters that I like the least in the old Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> uh, even the even the one kid I'm not who's a actually dork, pretty I'm a, cool. But I'm not a dork. I'm a hacker. You're going through the menus. <laughs> it's a it's a Unix. Wow. How okay, do you know okay. how to run an operating system okay. that was only on a computer that was literally worth like twenty thousand dollars? <laughs> okay. 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 She in the book was even worse because she had nothing going for her. She was just a whiny little kid. <laughs> But they, 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 I mean, they tried to give her something to do, but that came off across as even more unrealistic. Well, the thing is, is that the incredibly fake-looking operating system in Jurassic Park the movie is a real operating system. It's Unix is a real thing, but it only was a specific operating system for like Silicon Silicon Graphics super mega ultra computers that no consumer would ever own. So the fact that she knows how to use it is like, wow, okay, geez. And this was the age before Google. <laughs> Uh, and you know, in my head canon now, she's like, she 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 runs around sneaking into places, hacking into computers directly in her spare time, and nobody ever finds out about this until she's like forty three. They're probably gonna have <laughs> one of those kids cameo if they keep on making Jurassic Worlds. They're gonna have those kid one of those kids cameo eventually. I'm pretty sure. Although probably yeah. the part in Jurassic World where they rode the old Jurassic Park uh, little buggy was cool. I did like that. Even even though it made made absolutely zero sense how a kid who was like 16, oh, 17 years old oh, knew how to fix up a ninety. Jeep. Yeah, who knows how to fix up a ninety two Jeep? It it was <laughs> it was like the one bit of nostalgia that actually worked. I think is more what I'm. Well, talking you know, about. that's not super super de duper unrealistic because you get a lot of those kids who have like uncles who keep old cars and they'll bond with their uncle over learning how to Maybe their mess with the mechanical mechanic stuff. Or some other shit. That that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff is that kind of stuff is fairly common to the real world. It's just convenient <laughs> that he happened to have that skill in that particular place. But it it makes more sense than hacker girl over here, <laughs> you know? Uh 
Uh, I, in any case, I liked the kids. I liked the concept of the park. It was cool seeing the. It was cool seeing like what Jurassic Park might have turned into if it had succeeded and continued on into like the 2010s. But um, but uh, the characters kind of are super generically awesome. Like you got the you got this uh, sort of. I forget was the man, was the main character uh, the, Chris, it's Pratt. Chris Pratt. Chris he doesn't Pratt. have he, the character doesn't have a name. It's Chris Pratt. Chris Pat, <laughs> Pratt was he like in the military at some point? I don't remember. He I don't. I like, don't know. And I don't so think cool. anyone cares. <laughs> I'm so he cool. Looks like, I raise raptors. He looks like the uh. he looks like the kind of guy that you'd find out five at, five minutes after meeting him that he was a Navy SEAL, yeah. and he's also super dependable and he's super honorable. Unfortunately, Chris <laughs> Pratt is also is now one of those. He is never a character anymore. He is just Chris yeah, Pratt. Yeah, it, 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 it's like okay, you've got this like super attractive alpha male kind of guy with a really great personality, and then you've got the super independent career woman who takes charge of everything. And it's like, is this a Jurassic Park movie, or am I reading a Daniel Steele novel? Oh boy, it's hint art. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. I simultaneously love and hate hint art. Hint art is the thing. It's a neat idea, but they're so badly done. Because uh, some of them are either too, the thing is is that they're, they're, they're either way too easy or, or way too hard. <laughs> yeah, is the thing. Like that one, you have to go a way far ways north in order to get that, and you have to look at the art for the uh, moon to appear. So you yeah. can't just get it beforehand if you already know where it is. You have to check the picture. You don't have to take I a might... screenshot of it though. The game doesn't track that. But I might have I might have reached for the wrong author name as far as illustrating that problem but you know you get the point eh. you see super mario odyssey actually revived a weird piece of nostalgia for me from galaxy in that like how my wii menu was filled with letters from toad telling me where luigi is my switch my switch <laughs> screenshots gallery is now full of random mario and art so you know uh that was a weird bit of nostalgia that i didn't expect to have happen but you know yeah yeah i, I get you Although those letters and stuff came in, came into your inbox automatically back then, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's not really a riddle; it's a question. trivia question. <laughs> Mario, who starred in the who starred in the 1984 Best Picture? What? That's not a riddle. The, that's a question. The thing about sphinxes is that they are actually like the the sphinx animal mythological creature is supposed to ask you riddles. There was a Harry Potter thing yeah. about that in the book. Kind what I would cut out of the movie though. I, <laughs> I know because Harry Potter told me. <laughs> I want I want I want a mod of this game where you just put a green bowler hat on top of the Sphinx and put in Adam West riddles. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Riddle like, me um, this, mustachioed plumber. <laughs> It's it's just interesting to see a Mario game of all things pull on that bit of mythology. It, it's 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 kind of a a strange reminder of something that you know I've always been aware of, but I always kind of take for granted because games like this don't go too deep into it. But you know, even the simplest kind of games, even the most lighthearted ones, will draw from some really interesting influences if you're willing to stop and take a look around at whatever they're doing. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> what game is that mechanic uh, outfit from? It's some... I it's think... an obscure NES racer, I think. Yeah, okay. Or uh, some sort of promotional material. Okay. Most likely. You know, if, if it's not some obscure NES thing or spinoff that Mario's a part of, it is some sort of promotional material. That's also where the scientist outfit came from. So, uh, Which, you know, it, you know not, not for nothing, it kind of pisses me off when everyone calls it the Rick and Morty outfit. It's like, it's not Rick and Morty. Guys. It's, it's have you seen it? Movie. It's Rick and Morty, John. Okay. Yeah, I know, but that and thing... We, we, we know Rick it's Morty, not, but, like, we know that's that that not where it's from, but it looks just like him. No, so. it's just that I see kids literally call uh, like Rick, it's a Rick and Morty reference. Like, are you, you fucking dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't it Get be off both? My lawn. Why can't it be both, John? Okay. <laughs> this is you one don't... of my favorite captures in the game. <laughs> what this thing? Yeah, I agree. It's pretty funny. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, you need to <laughs> you need to have a high IQ to understand Super NES reference. <laughs> <laughs> More like uh, I prefer the uh, I like the uh, pick where someone superimposed Mario doing SpongeBob going to Pearl's prom. <laughs> 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 With this. <laughs> Just gross his legs. 
I this would you wouldn't think on concept that this would be such a fun capture, but just the way the the stretchy legs work and the way you do a you do a jump whenever you spring off of them makes it really fun to traverse uh, platforms with this thing. Yeah, there's a lot of platforming sections in the Iron Road segment that are a lot of fun with this thing. Although you can yeah, skip uh, basically all of them if you know uh, what you're doing. This is this is one of the best examples of what makes the capture system in Odyssey such a good addition to the game because you know it's it's all kinds of different powers that are inherently really good extensions of what Mario already does. I th yep, those are the kind of powers yep, I like the most. I think the it's it's also not as you're not as committed to it as say like the B suit from Galaxy or whatever in that okay you're usually in a capture not for super long. You're usually in a capture for, like, at most a few minutes. So it Well, yeah, at, on, on the one hand, you know, uh, you can get out of it at any time, which is, which is freeing. You don't necessarily need to be stuck with B-Mario's floaty-ass jump until you or hit water or take damage or something. The, the, on the other hand, you can keep a capture for as long as you want within that level. So you also Best have the option music. of sticking with it in places you don't necessarily need it if you just happen to like playing as it. Uh, I agree. This what is, at Kingdoms... the very least, the best instrumental song in the game. Like, I, I do uh, love those. Yeah. I do love... I, I'm sorry. I, I love this theme, but not the best song. Um, okay, <laughs> what's what's better than it, John? I like Fossil Falls more. I like... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with John, but this is a very, very fun, jaunty tune, yeah. you know? Well, don't get me wrong, because because now i got to clarify that it's just not a bad song. I, 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 oh, I so, John, let me, let me <laughs> understand. If you say that it's not the best... It's the worst. It is the it is the worst. Okay. I never want to hear it again. <laughs> Kirby sucks. <laughs> but uh <laughs> But um No no. Like I love this song, but not the best song. Okay. 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 Second best capture. Fire Brothers and Hammer Brothers, because you can just don't go like freaking crazy with them. I don't. The only thing I don't like about Hammer Brothers is that their default movement is hopping, and it just kind of it just feels a little weird. Well, it, that's kind it, of the point. It does. Is the, is it does. I, 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 I can I can I can understand that. Uh, but at the same time, I just love being able to go freaking batshit insane with their weapons. And you're kind because of like, forced to too, because they don't shoot straight all the time. They you shoot. Know, all over the place, so you have to. Mash. You know all, all the, you know all those freaking, all those freaking bastard level designs in Mario Maker that use too many goddamn Hammer Brothers. Now you get to harness that power for yourself, and it's great. Well, you see, I actually don't because too many people are busy putting a thwomp at the very beginning of the level for me to to see them. So. Oh, he knows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you can't wall jump to that though. Is the thing. It's it too looks... small of a gap. You can't get in there. Uh, you have to go and do the hole from the other side. Yeah, but it looks like you could like grab onto it and climb up. Is the thing. yeah. That's why I was trying it a bit too much. This this entire sequence, though, I love it. But for some reason, it reminds me of Planet Wisp. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> maybe it's, it's a, maybe it's a bit of the jazziest tune. Well, it's also the fact that it's partially mechanical and partially overgrown and it's a similar kind of color for the for the metal parts like people were making yeah. sonic colors uh comments as soon as they like even before the game came out actually it's like oh sonic did it first mario's such a ripoff hashtag so, well, sonic didn't do it first i'm pretty sure the uh, the industrialization of um of a woodland area has been a theme in video games yeah. since a long, galaxy long is time such ago. a colors ripoff yeah I'm a <laughs> <laughs> i mean no, I, mean, I, could... I mean i mean I mean, Mad Space did technically do the gravity gravity planet toys first. I mean, because of the color God, scheming. Galaxy is such a Sonic Adventure two. I, I mean, because of the color scheming, uh, I, I I think of Sonic Colors first when I look at this level. But it's also a level. Uh, it's also a level theme that you can point to Ratchet and Clank for. Not the remake because they cut that level out of the remake for some reason. The original game had a level pretty much exactly like this with a with a ro robotic. Um, uh, lumberjack theme going on. Yeah, well, but we that's, know, a well, Sony, we know that's, that's a Sony platformer, so nobody cares about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, people ca people care, it's just that Nintendo doesn't know that a PlayStation really exists. <laughs> well, I I'm mostly joking in that, like, yeah, there are people who care, but the enthusiasm seems to dampen whenever somebody's like, yeah, Mario, man, Sonic, what about Jack and Daxter? Yeah. What? <laughs> that Jack seems to be the overall... Theme yeah, when it yeah, goes it, for it, those it, kind it, of it, it has to do with the pl platformers were were sort of losing momentum in the PS2 era. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that they were that they were out, 
but they were on their way out as far as uh, public hype goes. So we didn't get as much, as much out, uh, as much loud mass enthusiasm for Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter as we did for Sonic and Mario. Yeah, uh, it must have been a rough being a PlayStation platformer fan from like 2005 to like. You mean PlayStation 3? <laughs> like, basic, well, basically, yeah, because most of your platformers were either, like, most of the major platformers during that era were Nintendo exclusive, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel bad. Well, you had Rayman Origins, which is... Well, you had, Ray you had Rayman, you had a few Ratchet and Sly stuff, you had Sonic Generations. 